At just 21 years old, Paolo Bancaro won Rookie of the Year, became an All-Star, and led his team all the way to the playoffs. He's already achieved so much, and not only did he lead his team to the playoffs, they were just one game away from advancing to the second round. And throughout the whole series, he broke multiple different records in the process. He set a Magic franchise record for the most points scored in his first 7 playoff games with 189, beating out guys like Shaq and Dwight Howard. He also became the youngest player in NBA history to score 35 plus points in a Game 7, and became the fourth player to have 30, 10, and 5 in a playoff game at age 21 or younger, where he joins Luka Doncic, Magic Johnson, and LeBron somehow did it three different times. And although the Magic failed to close out the series against the Cavs, they still had a really good season as a team and Paolo showed the world how good he really is. He had three different 30 plus point games and really only struggled in one or two. Paolo averaged 27 points, 8.5 rebounds, and 4 assists throughout the 7 games. Which is just crazy coming from a dude that would be in his junior year of college. He was first on the team in points and rebounds, second in assists, third in steals, and fourth in blocks. Just all around impactful in every category. If you watch the Magic during the regular season, then you already know how good of a player Paolo is. At 6'10", he plays more like a guard than he does a power forward. He'll grab a rebound and take it coast to coast, size up a defender in isolation, or be the player that initiates the offense. You almost forget he's as tall as he is because his play style is very different than most players at 6'10", and sometimes that's even to his own detriment. But the more games he plays, the more you'll see him find the perfect balance between the two play styles, and when that happens, the league is actually screwed. Paolo likes to drive to the rim, but he's also a pretty underrated shooter. He shot 40% from 3 throughout the series and shot 34% throughout the season. He can knock down the open catch and shoot, but he can also create a jumper for himself. His footwork and ability to create space in the mid-range also helps keep his defenders guessing. And even if you manage to stay in front of him and get a good contest, Paolo can still knock down some pretty difficult shots. No matter how many people close out and get a body on him, he can still go right through them. And even if the lane is clogged up, he can still find a way to score or make the right read on the kickout. His playmaking has gotten a lot better since his rookie season and will only get better the more he plays. He's got a really good all-around package for such a young player and was an all-star for a reason. In Game 3, after being down 0-2, he had 31 points and 14 rebounds and a blowout win which ultimately kept them in the series. He was able to do basically whatever he wanted and was the main reason they won by as much as they did. Over half the time, the offense ran through him and he put up that stat line in less than 30 minutes. Then, in a one-point loss in Game 5 after struggling in the previous game, he bounced back with a stat line of 39 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists. He really did everything he could to keep his team in the game, but almost everyone else struggled on offense and the Cavs had it going on both ends. The next highest scorer on the Magic in that game was Franz Wagner, who had just 14. And because not many players were really able to score, even more of the Cavs' defensive attention was on him. Anytime he would drive or try to create a shot, there were multiple other players helping to get a contest. He was still able to shoot really well, but going forward, you start to see it even more. In Game 6, the Magic were able to stay alive in their very first elimination game because really everybody showed up. Paolo led the way with 27, but Wagner and Jalen Suggs both had 20 plus points themselves. Although Donovan Mitchell absolutely destroyed them on defense, literally scoring 50 points, they did enough to keep themselves alive and force a Game 7, which was very impressive for such a young team. In Game 7, however, they really struggled despite Paolo having one of his best games. He ended with 38 points, 16 rebounds, and 3 steals, which is actually unreal for a dude that young trying to avoid elimination. He wasn't nervous and didn't shy away from the moment at all. He completely embraced it and was really the only bright spot of this game for the Magic. Because Suggs shot just 2 for 13 and Wagner shot 1 for 15. Yeah, you can score 60 points, but when your next two top scorers combine for 3 for 28, it's going to be hard to win that game. The next highest scorer on the team was Wendell Carter Jr. with just 13. It was actually close throughout the whole first half, but nobody on the entire team could make a shot in the second half. 
Because everyone was missing, more focus was on Paolo, and I do respect him for continuing to attack the rim even though he was facing multiple defenders. They sent him to the line a ton, but he was genuinely drawing fouls while trying to score. And you could really see how bad he wanted to win from the heart that he showed on the court. Then in the press conferences, instead of putting the blame on his teammates, he put the blame on himself and defended Wagner when everyone else was tearing him down. On top of the fact that he's extremely good for his age, he also has the maturity you need out of your leader. You could watch his interviews and just know they'll be back next year. The Magic are super young, and basically the entire team is under contract for next year, so they will definitely be running it back. And if Paolo was that good in his very first playoff series, then I can only imagine how much better he's gonna get. I know not as many people watched this series as it went right to NBA TV, but it was actually one of my favorites. There were actually people clowning it, but a lot of the games were neck and neck until the team broke through. It was also the only series to go to 7 games, it was a lot better than people gave it credit for. But during Paolo's rookie season, he played really well, but did make your typical rookie mistakes here and there. The thing that made him so much better was the fact that he was able to play right through them. He was never too high and was never too low, he just kept trying to improve no matter what the situation was. And now in his second year, you're seeing all of that pay off. Like I said earlier, he was an all-star for a reason. He finished the regular season averaging 22.5 points, 7 rebounds, and 5.5 assists. And he improved in almost every category you could possibly improve in. Paolo played in all but two games throughout the season and had 28 games where he scored 25 or more points. He also had 14 games where he finished with over 8 assists, and in 5 of them he finished with over 10. At his height and position, he averaged almost 2 more assists than the next highest player on the team. He was easily one of the best players in the East this season, and one of the most impactful players overall in the playoffs. And the biggest thing for me is the dude just wants to win. I will never forget when he hit that game winner against the Pistons in the middle of like February and was literally in tears after the game. He was struggling over the past few games but was able to make the biggest shot of the night to restore some of his confidence. You can say it's just the Pistons but at the end of the day that's still a shot you dream of as a kid and you could clearly tell it meant a lot to him. In a league where a good amount of players only care about the money, it's awesome to see a dude truly care about every single win. It's what makes him such an easy player to root for. It's honestly what makes the entire Magic team easy to root for. Even if they aren't playing well, they will still show a ton of effort. Obviously, it sucks they lost in the first round, but the fact that they won 47 games while being 3 games away from the second seed is still really good. There is a lot to look forward to, on top of the fact that their best player has an extremely bright future. I still remember when people were questioning the magic for not drafting Chet Holmgren. Chet's a great player, don't get me wrong, but I feel like both teams got someone that just fits perfectly. Paolo going to the magic and absorbing a huge role immediately has played a big part in him becoming the player he is today. And once the offseason officially starts and they fill out their roster even more, they're gonna be that much better. But let me know down in the comments what you think about Paolo and leave a like on the video to support the channel. Also, subscribe if you're new for more basketball videos just like this one.